Hello Headway users, so this is Guy Barry here. I uh, thought I would just record a quick video to uh, or tutorial to show you how to make the very elusive sticky footer. Uh, when I talk about a sticky footer I mean a genuine sticky footer, so one where the footer will stick to the bottom if the content is shorter than the viewport. However, if the content is longer than the viewport, we don't want that footer to actually be in view. It should be at the bottom of the page, and that's how it normally works anyway. So I've, I've been almost reluctant to publish this tutorial uh, because it's so simple that um, I'm concerned that it's, it's, it's too simple. But anyway, if you can find fault with it and uh, help me improve it, that would be fantastic, but if it works, even better. So, here we've got our standard headway site, there's nothing special about it. Um, and at the moment it's just set up with uh, three wrappers. Uh, this should, in theory, work with with just one wrapper, uh, although you would then need to apply some of the code that I'm using, adapters, and uh, and put that onto put the class names onto the onto the footer block rather than the what I'm what I'm using here is a is a is a wrapper at the bottom as as my footer, um, which is this green bar over here. So this is the problem we're all familiar with. Uh, in our day-to-day -day use is that if the the content of our website is short then the footer floats up at the top and leaves this in my opinion unsightly space at the bottom of the site um, so just to show you Quickly, what that will look like if we put a bunch of content in there now. Save that and refresh. So that's what normally happens: is our content fills up the space in the middle, and our footer sits at the bottom, and that's and that's normal. So really what we're trying to address here is this issue. Okay, without further ado, uh, so to get going with this, the uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using these three elements. Uh, I would suggest that at the very least you create a separate lap, uh, uh, wrapper for the footer. Um, you don't actually need one for the header because we the codes we're using doesn't 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 make use of that at all. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up my content wrapper. So this is this is going to be the wrapper that contains your your content and it's the one that will actually push the footer down regardless of of the height. And I've given this this wrapper a CSS class, a custom class name uh, called Flexible Wrapper. Well, obviously, you can call that whatever you like. And that's it. So from there, we go into our design editor. Um, none of this is relevant just use it for a bit of colouring and what we're going to do is just put a bit of uh, CSS in here so the first thing that we'll do is just tell our website that we want the HTML and body height to be a hundred percent and I'm removing some padding and margin here on the body which uh, just to override the defaults you can uh, fiddle around with that if, if it doesn't suit your needs 
Now the other main thing that I'm going to do is we're all familiar with uh, the global white wrap element. Uh, the white wrap is, is the wrapper that encompasses the entire site. So what I'm going to do is just add a bit of CSS in there. Uh, so the border box property, um, it just determines the border box of the element. So any padding or border specified on the element is laid out and drawn inside uh, the specified width and height, um, which we've set so that it'll work responsibly to 100%. And then this is the thing which is odd, um, and, and many people are probably unaware of the display table selector. So as modern web developers, we're all told that tables are, are evil things and they should never be used. This isn't an HTML table. It's a CSS property. And all that's doing is uh, creating a, a a row and column selector which we can actually make use of for um, expanding the height and pushing down the content. That's really all that is. And then the last thing that we we're going to do was just have a look at our flexible wrapper and we'll give that uh, property display so now we're giving it a CSS table row and then what we'll do is we'll just give that a height of 100% see immediately what's happened on our empty page as it's pushed our footer down to the bottom and I'm just going to give it a color so that it stands out nicely obviously this is something that you uh, don't need to do the, the, the background color set whichever color you want for your site um, and I'll need to make that important. And that's it. And, that, and that's why I said I was actually reluctant to even post this because it, it's so ridiculously simple that I fear it uh, is too simple. So we'll save that. Refresh the page. And voila, now you'll see what happens is if I resize the window, it actually pushes the footer to the bottom. Uh, and then when I reach the, the, the actual height of the content uh, block, it stops in the normal way. Uh, there's a little bit of space uh, at the bottom here. And that's actually the equivalent height of the uh, WordPress toolbar. So the scroll bar actually disappears if we log out of the site. Uh, why is that still loading? So if, so if I log out of here, then it, it actually, the, this uh, vertical scroll bar will disappear. You can force a scroll bar to show all the time by using over scroll Y uh, set to visible. And then just to demonstrate again how this works, if we put some content on our page. So what this should do now is push the footer down below out of sight. Let's try that 
again. That's not enough. Put some more in there. So there it's behaving normally. Uh, our content fills up our page and the footer appears at the bottom. Incredible. Incredibly simple. It's taken. I've been searching for this solution for years. There it is. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Stop this thing.